Hello everyone, my name is Brad, and I'm doing a review of this AlphaWise U20 3D printer. This was sent to me via GearBest because I work on the Fusion 360 team at Autodesk, so I do a lot of CAD design and also a lot of 3D printing. I'm going to start out by saying this is a great, great printer. I love it. Um, some of the reasons that I really like this is the build volume. It's 300 by 300 by 400 millimeters. So that's about 12 inches by 12 inches by about 15, almost 16 inches tall. So you can print some pretty large stuff with this. To me, it looks a lot like a Creality CR10 um, and the price is incredibly affordable. That's one of the other reasons I really like this machine. It has a 3.5 inch color touch screen and it has an all metal extruder. One of the other things I really like about it is that it has a 24 volt system which helps heat the bed up much quicker. Because this is a fairly large sized bed, uh, you know, 300 by 300, it can take some time to warm that up. But by using 24 volts, it actually warms the bed up much quicker. One of the other things that I absolutely love about this printer is that the power supply and the electronics are mounted inside of the printer instead of being outside, which takes up extra desk space. In fact, you can see here, um, this is actually fitting on a fairly small, um, basically a bookcase I have in my office. Uh, so I love the fact that everything is kind of enclosed inside of the printer instead of being separate. It just makes it look so much nicer, much less of a rat's nest of wires everywhere. It also has dual Z-axis steppers and lead screws, which will lead to much more accurate 3D prints. Another nice thing about this printer is that it has eccentric adjustment nuts. This allows you to kind of tighten things up a little bit if they start to get loose after uh, a lot of wear and tear on the machine. It also has power outage resume. So if the power shuts off for whatever reason, the machine will remember where it was in the G code. And when you start the machine back on again, or when the power comes back on again, it'll resume printing from that location. It also has filament runout or breakage protection sensing. What this means is, for example, if you run out of filament as you're 3D printing, it'll pause, allow you to load in new filament, and then it'll continue to print. Instead of losing that 75% complete print uh, where you ran out of filament, this actually allows you to continue. It also has the breakage protection. So if the filament were to break for any reason as it's printing, um, the little micro switch will sense that and pause the printer to allow you to either load new filament uh, or just refeed the current filament. It also has open sourced Marlin software, where some of the other printers out there have proprietary software. Uh, the AlphaWise U20 has this open source Marlin software, so you can go in and modify it uh, if you need to and upload it right into the printer very easily through the uh, three and a half inch touch screen. Okay, let me talk about the unboxing and assembly. Um, I didn't record that unfortunately, but let me just tell you that it was very easy to unbox and set up. I mean, I was literally printing probably within about 15 minutes of opening the box. It was very well packaged. Um, it basically comes in two units. You have the main um, bottom unit here, and then you have the Z axis unit. And the Z axis was a little bit, was separate from the main unit. And all you had to do was mount these brackets to install the Z axis. Allen wrenches were included to aid in the assembly, so I didn't have to go out into the garage and look for certain size tools to assemble this. Everything was included in the box. Once you get the uh, frame assembled, the next thing you'll do is basically plug in all of the wiring. And 
every single plug was labeled. So for example, um, when you were installing the uh, Z-axis stepper motors, you would see a label on the plug that said Z-axis stepper. Uh, you also, um, the micro switches were labeled. So it was basically plug and play. You just looked at the label and installed it into the correct location. Again, very simple, especially if you're brand new to 3D printing and you're unsure. I thought the assembly uh, of this Alpha YZU20 was very easy to do. Once I got everything installed, uh, the next thing I did was level the bed. Um, again, there's many different ways to level the bed. Uh, I used the uh, single sheet of paper method. Um, and the uh, Alpha Wise U20 has automatic bed leveling uh, built right into it. So you just go through the menu and press the icon and it moves the head to a certain location and zeroes it out and you can um, put your piece of paper underneath there, for example, or your feeler gauge, whichever method you're using. And then you can adjust the uh, knobs underneath to raise or lower the bed at that location. And you do this through all four corners uh, and then it's complete. I also uh, send it to the middle of the bed and check the middle of the bed once uh, all four corners are complete. Again, built right into the um, the printer, so I found it very easy to do that. Like I mentioned before, I was basically up and running within like 10 to 15 minutes of unboxing this thing. Uh, so the first thing I printed was a spiral vase. Um, this was included on the SD card, which is actually included with the 3D printer. Uh, there was uh, two files on there. One of them takes about 20 minutes to print. The other one's more like about an hour and a half to two hours to print. Um, but the first one I did was the spiral vase. Um, in fact, that's what's printing on it right now. And um, first impressions, I was blown away. Um, compared to some of my other 3D printers that I've used, I thought the quality of this right out of the box was incredible. I was very, very pleased. Um, one thing I noticed, it wasn't printing right in the center of the bed, um, but again, um, this was a, a sample file. It wasn't something that I actually created um, and posted out from like Cura, for example. Now, I would say one of the negatives um, I felt with setting up the printer was that the manual was kind of lacking. Um, I wish there was some more depth, um, better pictures, maybe a larger manual. It was fairly small. Um, so, for example, I wasn't sure where to route all of these cables. Um, they, they included zip ties um, to, to zip tie and kind of organize the cables. And again, I wasn't sure, you know, if I did that, would it limit movement and all that kind of stuff. So I would have liked maybe some better pictures um, on showing where to actually physically route these wires to avoid pinching um, or snagging. Um, I also noticed that on the, one of my Z-axis, um, the mounting bolts were a little bit loose. Um, as I shook it around, you could actually uh, see it wobble a little bit. And again, this might have just been something due to shipping. So I ended up tightening those screws just a little bit. Again, I would do this with any machine that I got. So um, after you have the whole thing set up, I would just go through and make sure you know, the bed isn't loose, um, that the extruder it doesn't wobble or anything like that. Just make sure everything, uh, you know, the fit and finish is really good. So here are some of my first prints using the AlphaWise U20 printer. Like I mentioned before, it printed incredible right out of the box. Um, the first one I did was the spiral vase with the included filament sample. Um, so like I mentioned before, they even include um, everything you need to start printing. So there's some sample filament, uh, which was white in this case, and here you can see uh, the quality of that print. Uh, then I loaded some of my personal um, filament that I like to use. I like to use Hatchbox PLA. So I printed that vase again using the, uh, the Hatchbox Black. And again, you can see the results are absolutely um, incredible, I think. Then I went and printed a sample cube, uh, which I downloaded off of Thingiverse. 
Um, this allowed me to kind of see the, the size uh, of the cube uh, in relation to what it was supposed to be and how it printed. And again, the output was absolutely amazing. Uh, in fact, it was supposed to be a 20 millimeter cube and I got 19.99 in one direction and 20.03 um in the the other direction so definitely within my needs of uh, 3d printing the next thing that i printed was the 3d benchy you know, the standard um, test print uh, downloaded that off of thingiverse also um, i used a different filament for this and i wasn't as happy with the result again i don't think it's because of the printer as much as it was the filament. Um, I didn't mess too much with temperature differences um, and so I just felt like the layers were a little bit more visible on the benchy than I wanted it to, to be and you can kind of see that in this example here um, but again uh, this was actually a better print than what I would typically get with uh, one of my other 3D printers that I've used. So after printing the small 3D Benchy, I figured I'd put the uh, Alpha YZ20 to its test um, because it can print fairly large objects. Um, I printed a large violin. Um, in fact, this thing uh, was almost as tall as what the uh, Alpha Ys can print. Uh, it took over two days to print this violin. Unfortunately, I had made a mistake in the uh, G code. I had modified. I, some g-code earlier doing a uh, temperature tower test where it changed the temperature um, after certain levels i had forgotten to remove that when i went to print the violin and so the violin printed pretty well um, but it, it got colder and colder um, the the farther it printed and so unfortunately some of the layers separated um, once we started assembling the uh, the large violin uh, so it did crack, um, but again, that was my fault, not the fault of the printer. Uh, so I am going to print this again, um, probably using uh, some Hatchbox material. As I'm used to the temperatures for that, I know how it prints. I really like Hatchbox. Um, so if you're looking to uh, figure out which kind of filament to use, um, I can attest that I, I find Hatchbox to be one of the better ones out there. Some of the changes that I've made to the printer um, since I've been using it for a while is that I did replace the original build tack and the original glass with a thicker mirror glass that I got from Home Depot. Um, I found this much easier to level the bed. Um, after printing on this printer for a while, it seemed like the, the glass and the build tack um, was having a hard time staying perfectly flat. Uh, so I ended up replacing it with um, a thicker piece of mirror and then I also put a sheet of PEI uh, Which I personally really like to use um, It's a type of uh, material that as it warms up it kind of really grips onto the PLA and then after it cools off you're, you're able to release that PLA print off of the bed very easily um, so there's not a lot of scraping, there's not a lot of chance of breaking glass or anything like that using some of the other um, adhesive methods such as glue sticks or uh, um, tape, etc. Um, you can see there that the print just finished. So I'll bring this out and so you can see how easily that popped off. However, it stayed adhered to the, the bed during the print. So again, I personally really like the PLA. Um, in fact, that printed without the, uh, the bed being turned on even. So the bed is not heated at this moment. Another thing that I did was I printed this tool holder that I found on Thingiverse to hold all of the tools that were included with this 3D printer. So you can see here, we've got pliers, the wrench, um, some Allen wrenches, etc. I'll link to this uh, file in the description uh, of this video where I found it out on Thingiverse. One of the other things that I do is I like to use a stylus to operate the touch screen. 
I find it much easier than using my fat fingers. Um, so if you have some kind of a stylus, um, I personally recommend using that for the three and a half inch touchscreen. And now for my list of pros and cons with the Alpha Wise U20. I'll start out with the pros, the first one being the cost. You get a very high quality printer for a very affordable price. This thing is all metal. In fact, the only 3D printed part on this printer is the little fan shroud around the extruder. The other thing I really like about this is the large print volume. The fact that I can do, you know, basically 12 inches by 12 inches by almost 16 inches, you can print some very large parts on here. Um, for example, this helmet back here, I think I had to print in like 16 separate parts on my other 3D printer that I have. I could probably do it in two parts. I haven't attempted it yet, but um, the fact that you can print some very large parts on this printer, I think is a huge plus. One of the other things I really like about this printer was just the easy setup. Literally within a few minutes of unboxing this thing, I was able to create some gorgeous 3D prints. I think this is a huge plus, especially for those that are interested in just getting started with uh, 3D printing. You don't wanna to have to spend hours and hours figuring out how to make this thing work, tweaking with it, trying to get it level, etc. This thing just went together so smoothly. I also mentioned I love the compact design. The fact that everything's enclosed inside of the 3D printer instead of having the power unit and everything outside of the 3D printer. I just think that um, it, it looks so much nicer. Uh, it's, it's easier to manage. It's easier to move around if need be. Uh, so the fact that it's kind of a compact design, um, I think is a huge plus. Another thing I really like is the filament runout or breakage sensor. And I actually got to use this in real life um, instead of simulating it for this video. Um, as I was printing something, the filament that I was using actually broke and the sensor sensed it and it paused my print and I was able to refeed in the filament and uh, continue on with my print. And uh, some of my other printers don't have that option. And there's many, many times where I was, you know, almost done with the 3D print and ran out of filament or the filament broke and you have to throw away your 3D print. Not with this printer. I think that's awesome. I also really like the touch screen. Uh, it is so much easier to use than having to use those dial menus where you turn and press and then turn and press and turn and press to dive down into these sub menus. The touch screen I find extremely useful to use. Um, everything's right there. You don't have to go through hundreds of menus to try and find something. So I think the uh, touch screen is really easy to use. Um, gives you a lot of information and is a huge plus. One of the other things uh, I like about this is that the bed heats up reasonably quick. For the size of it, it actually warms up pretty quickly. Um, again, that's due to the 24 volt system uh, for heating the bed. Um, and you can also on the screen, you can see a line graph um, of the bed heating up. So you actually can kind of estimate how long it's gonna take. Now with the PEI sheet, I like to turn on the bed heater and let it actually warm up for quite some time and let it sit at um, you know 70 degrees Celsius, for example, for about five to 10 minutes, even before I print. Um, that just makes sure that the PEI is, is ready to accept the print. Now for the cons on this printer, there's not very many, but there's a couple. Um, I mentioned the main one earlier, as I thought the manual was, was quite lacking. Um, I'd like to, uh, to see a better manual, especially for those that are brand new to 3D printing. I think the manual could actually be a little bit of a turnoff, um, just because there is not enough information in there uh, to help those new to 3D printing. So. Um, expect to maybe watch some YouTube videos on how to assemble this, and there's quite a few out there. Um, so um, again, wish the manual was better, but I guess being a technical person, I, I, I like manuals. <laughs> so um, the other thing I didn't really like too much was the build tack and the glass plate seemed to warp after a few uses. 
Um, so I had to replace it with my mirror glass and the PEI sheet. Um, but again, I kind of consider those things almost like, you know, updates you would do normally. Uh, kind of like with your car, for example, you get your standard tires and after a while you're going to replace them with better, you know, all weather tires, for example. Kind of the same thing with 3D printing. So uh, not, a, not a huge negative there. Um, and then one of the other things I noticed that some of the features on the touch screen are quite small and hard to read. Uh, for example, the temperatures are in this little bar across the top. Um, I kind of wish it was more front and center, a little bit bigger uh, for my eyes <laughs> to see. Um, and then the last thing, like I mentioned, was I was unsure how to route the cables. Um, again, because the manual didn't really show how to do that very well. Um, so I was a little bit nervous at first, you know, where should these cables go? So in closing, I really recommend this printer. Um, it has replaced some of my other printers because of the print size and the quality of the prints. Uh, it's very affordable and I would definitely recommend this 3D printer to anyone interested in 3D printing. I hope you found this review useful and look out for future reviews on other products and we'll see you then. Thank you.